Duneur is currently a director of, at BMS Corporate Services, an accounting, tax and advisory company based in Durban North. BMS offers a wide range of accounting, tax and advisory services to small to medium-sized companies as well as individuals. So today we're talking with Gordon because I think a lot of small companies can't understand the basic concept of accounting or keeping good financial management accounts at the, at the end of the month. And primarily the reasons why some small businesses don't succeed. So we're going to get into conversation with Gordon right now. Gordon, welcome to Biz Today. It's lovely to have you in studio. Thank you very much, Nancy. Okay, excellent. So, you know, accounting principles or just the basic understanding for small businesses to try and figure out, okay, can I keep books and why should I keep them? I think scares even the, the, the most resilient of business owners, right? Have you had Absolutely. that experience? Yes, most uh, small business owners are very afraid of um, the administrative burden as well as SARS compliance more than anything else. One of the most important questions we get asked, or one of the first questions we get asked, is, uh, is SARS going to be after me? And that's not really the case. As long as you stay within the bounds of the law, obviously, SARS can't really do anything to you. There's a certain amount of tax that needs to be paid, and once that's paid, then uh, you're within the bounds of what you need to do, and uh, everything is good. So that sounds very reassuring, which I think will help us to open the conversation and um, try to understand. So how would you advise, what are the business fundamentals that a small business should remember in trying to keep good management accounts? So what should they remember about good accounting principles overall? Well, there's firstly, um, the most important thing is to um, know that before you've even started a business, it's, an, it's very important to plan yeah. your business correctly first. Okay. There's nothing worse than starting a business because you've got a really good idea and getting three months down the line or six months down the line and um, you find that the planning hasn't been done and your business isn't as good as what you thought it was. Yeah. Because then you end up with liabilities that you are going to battle to pay and it takes you a long time in order to get, um, get back on track. So liabilities, for the benefit of our viewers, mm. I'm going to explain oh, the absolutely. big words. Is that debt? That's, that's exactly right. Uh, there are five fundamental parts of accounting records. The first one is income. Income is um, what you earn from third parties okay. for services or um, goods that you've rendered to yeah. them, which you don't have to repay. Okay. Liabilities, on the other hand, are for money that you receive in the same way as what you would for income from a customer but that you have to repay to a third party. Yeah. So that's the big difference between a liability and an income. Then you also get expenses. Expenses are what you have to pay in order to be able to earn the income. Okay. So, and obviously those are where there's no tangible asset which remains after you've spent that money. Things like telephone costs, consulting fees, um, administrative costs, salaries, rents, that kind of thing, that's okay. an expense. Um, when you have, uh, when you spend money and there's something tangible that remains after that, that's an asset. An asset would be something like inventory or purchasing a delivery vehicle. Or if you've rendered a service to a customer and they haven't yet paid you and it's an account receivable, so that's an asset. That's something that you're going to still receive. So money that you can claim, money outstanding, can claim. outstanding. Um, and then obviously also the most important asset is cash. Cash. Okay, so you talked about five fundamental principles. Mm. In the fifth one is equity. Now, equity. this is what remains for the owner of the business once all the liabilities have been paid. So the assets that remain once all the liabilities have been paid. Okay, let's go through those again very quickly. So it's income, mm -hmm. liabilities, mm -hmm. expenses, assets, assets, and equity. Correct, yes. Brilliant. Yes. As in, and every small business owner should have a fair understanding of this? Every business owner should have a fundamental understanding of this. Because if you don't understand that, you don't know the three most important parts of your business. And these are obviously, first, firstly, where your business comes from. Yeah. So that would be the income and expenses from the past. So you've made a profit. You want to know why you made that profit so that you can replicate that or improve on that even. Then you've got your balance sheet, which shows you where your business stands at the moment, which is effectively the net of your assets and your liabilities. Yeah. So that would give you an indication of what you've got in order to move forward. 
And then very importantly, how to move forward. And this would be budgeting and forecasting, okay. cash flow forecasts and that kind of thing. Those are very important. So the first step in this process is to plan. The first step is planning. Mm. And you would plan by? By preparing a budget. Okay. Okay. Now budget is very important because what many people, what the mistake that many people make is that with income, they're too uh, optimistic. Mm. So what they'll do is they will say that uh, they're going to make this income no matter what. But in actual fact, there's a fairly large possi possibility that you're not going to be able to make that income. That's right. Or that that contract gets given to somebody else. So when you budget, it's very important to be realistic, conservatively realistic with regard to your incomes. So only put incomes into your budget that are more than likely to, um, to come to fruition. Okay. With expenses, it's very important to be realistic and almost to be overly realistic. So if there's an expense that you might incur, put it in. Quite simply because if you don't incur that expense, you get away with not incurring a certain expense, then your results look a lot better than what you originally planned and then things are much better. We were having such an interesting conversation, right? I mean, the um, knowledge you need to have as a startup company or as a small business owner is, it seems like it just, it's unraveling uh, mm. each time I think about it. And I think that's maybe what scares small business owners or business owners in general about getting a good handle on um, better financial management of their mm. business. Mm. Because I always hear from seasoned business owners, learn to read the numbers and you'll know the health of your business. And uh, unfortunately, we're so busy trying to make the business happen that we're not reading the numbers and you just chuck all your receipts into a box and give it to uh, an accounting officer if you're lucky to have one and try to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. And look at the cash flow, although it forecast every now and then. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're going into your bank account and doing things. So my next question is, because I, I got to get you back on the show. We mm -hmm. need to have another conversation. My next question is how... Um, do we understand all the compliance that's necessary for a small business in terms of SARS? And what should we be looking out for? So if you had to list them, what do we need to know about being tax compliant? Okay, well, firstly, all small businesses have to be registered for income tax. That's income tax? Income tax. Okay. That's your, your most basic building block when it comes to the receiver of revenue. Is that UIF and PAYE? We'll get to UIF and PAYE. Okay. That comes along when you actually start employing employees. Yeah. So often what will happen is that you don't have employees when you first start out. So the first step is to register for income tax. Um, income tax is your basic um, where you make a profit. Yeah. Whatever that profit is that you've made, the receiver of revenue wants to have a portion of that in order for you to have used the facilities and the infrastructure of the country. That's, I think, the most simple way of putting it. Okay. So you've used the roads, you've used um, the basic services and the infrastructures in order to be able to make the profits that you've made. So SAR says, well, give me 28% of that. 28%? Well, yes, generally, okay. that's, that's your norm. There is a very, very nice small business corporation tax incentive, which I don't really think we've got time in order to go into that at the moment, um, but we will maybe in another interview yeah. uh, where it can be something more specific. So when you register a company, you register for income tax. Also, all individuals who earn over a certain amount of income have to register for income tax as well. Okay. The second step in the process is when you start employing people, you have to register for PAYE. So you register as an employer and you deduct PAYE, UIF, and if your, your salaries are above 500,000 Rand, also SDL from your, well, the SDL you don't deduct from your, from your employees, but you have to pay, pay SDL to the government as well. Once a company has reached the threshold of a million Rand, it then has to register for VAT, uh, value added tax. Value added tax is a tax which is on any goods or services which are past raw material. Yeah. A VAT return is submitted to SARS every two months. A, a EMP 201, which is for PAYE, is submitted every month. And an income tax return is submitted annually. 
You also get provisional tax returns because SARS wants to get their money a little bit sooner than waiting for the end of the year for income tax. Yeah. So every six months you have to uh, declare to the receiver of revenue what you expect your income to be and to pay a provisional tax on that. So that by the end of the year you have paid the majority of your income tax. Okay. And those are your basic um, basic taxes that you that you have to register for. Can we go through them just as a list basis again quickly? Mm, very quickly, absolutely. Uh, the first one is income tax. Yeah. Okay. All companies have to register for income tax, and your return is submitted once annually. Linked to that is provisional tax, and your returns have to be submitted every six months. If you employ any employees, you have to be registered as an employer, and you have to submit an EMP two hundred one for the deduction of PAYE every month. And if your turnover is over a million rand, then you have to register for VAT, and every two months you would submit a VAT return. That was actually easy to remember. It was quite simple also to understand. I don't know why uh, we have this fear of thinking there's so many things you need to be compliant with, but it's actually pretty simple if you look at it. It is very simple. I have one last question. I, I definitely got to get you back into the studio because we have so much to talk about in terms of a small business being uh, not only compliant, but having good um, and I would say healthy financial management in the business. How do business owners need to see themselves in a business in terms of uh, the finances, the liberties they have over using the cash in the bank, and the compliance that we need to have as business owners. So do we see ourselves as business owners, as shareholders, as members, if it's a CC, or as an employee? Mm. What's very important to remember with businesses is that it is a separate legal entity. And it's a big mistake that a lot of business, small business owners make that they see themselves as the business. Once they've made that mistake, they often use the resources of the company for their own benefit before the benefit of the company. Now, as a director of the company, and often in small businesses, the directors are shareholders of the company as well, you've got a fiduciary responsibility, and that's quite a big word. Fiduciary responsibility means you've got a responsibility to the company to that you have to put ahead of your own interests to ensure that the company its creditors and employees are looked after. Mm. So you've got to make decisions which aren't necessarily in your personal interest, but in the interest of the business. The so you can't just make a profit and take that money out for yourself. You've got to, you've got to keep those strict business disciplines in order to make sure that when you get to the end of the year and you've done an adequate cash flow forecast for the next year, if there's extra money available, then you can say, right, now I can take something extra out. Obviously, you're employed as an employee as well. Make sure that you pay yourself a salary because there's nothing worse than working and working and working and never earning a salary. Mm. But make sure, especially when you're a small business that's starting out, that you pay yourself nothing more than a market-related salary. Because if you're paying yourself more than that, you're pricing yourself out of the market that you find yourself in mm. and your business is going to fail. Uh, so before we wrap up, a business owner, initially they'll start the business. We've discussed all the different types of compliance they need to remember in, so in terms of tax, if I'm getting this right. Um, so I start a business. I go and I register for income tax. I register the business for income tax. And then also remember that there's a provisional tax return every six months. Do I register myself? as an employee, and would I be liable for PAY paying myself a salary in the first instance? Correct. You would have to register as a, um, or register for income tax as an individual. Mm. As I said, all companies and individuals, individuals who earn over a certain threshold have to register for income tax. Now that threshold is quite simply, for anybody under the age of 65, it is 75,000 Rand per annum, which works out to 6,250 Rand monthly. A month, yeah. For anybody between the age of 65 and 75, it's a little bit higher than that. And for anybody over the age of 75, it becomes even more than that. Mm. So anybody over the age of 65 can earn about 10,000 Rand before they have to register for tax. It's 
very unlikely that you're going to find a 75 year old that hasn't yet registered for tax. I was thinking. But effectively, they wouldn't be liable for any income tax. And if they've never registered, they would never have to register for income tax. It's been so interesting and eye opening having you in studio educating us about good financial management for small business owners. I am certain that we're going to see you in the next episodes coming up because we haven't finished our conversation. And that's truly what it's about, right? If you have a fear about accounting principles, then please keep watching because in the next episodes, we're certainly going to get you back in studio, Gordon. Thank you for joining us on this today. Thank you very much for having me, Naz. Wonderful. So please make sure that you stay tuned to the episodes coming up because we will have Gordon back in studio. I think there's so much to be talking about in terms of uh, good financial management in businesses. I know that it's certainly something that's responsible for a majority of small businesses failing at the end of it because of lack of planning. And we know planning is, is, is what the, the, it's the magic ingredient in getting your business up and going and also making it sustainable. So we'll get Gordon back in studio. I think that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us. Tune in next week. <laughs>